those are all the questions, guys. We're done with that. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> cool. Iron Popkin with the Ranted Hyenas here, and today we're actually going to be doing a um, a Q and A since we've hit almost 100 subscribers on YouTube as well as over 900 followers on Twitter. So I got a few questions here from some of you guys, and today we're gonna answer them. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna answer the questions of which the order that I got them. So here we go. Um, also, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for anyone's name that I uh, mispronounce. So, either way, let's get this going. First one is from Moloto. And the question is, how can one murder someone without getting caught? That is a damn good question. I'm very glad that you asked it. Now, moving on to the next one is uh, from Sharifi Life. If you had to change or had to choose one game and one game only to play for the rest of your life, what would you or what would you choose? Um, probably mercenaries. Uh, I just feel like you know there's so much you can do in that game. It's basically Grand Theft Auto with the ultimate destruction of all time. And if anyone hasn't played it, I highly recommend it. Let's see, third question is from L. How did you think of your channel name? Oh, that's deep. Um, this actually goes back to when we actually first got established. Um, it was through GTA Online with me and three of, you know, our actual real-life friends. It was me, Nick, Emmy, and then our friend Lexa, or also known as Little Bear. Um whom she hasn't been able to be in the, any of the videos um, because, you know, she's gotten tied up with life and school and stuff, but we're also always going to consider her a hyena no matter what, so. And you never know, she might make a comeback someday when she's not so busy. Um, but either way, it started, like I said, on Grand Theft Auto Online when, you know, I started a crew, and, you know, again, it was the four of us, and I was just kind of trying to think, well... What do I, what kind of theme should we do for our crew? And, you know, I just thought of different ideas and, you know, for some reason just the whole biker kind of gimmick popped into my head. So, started with that and, um, you know, that's where I made the logo was through the Grand Theft Auto Online, the Rockstar social thing. Uh, there was actually a lot of different logos and ideas that we had gone through before we landed on the one that we have now and um, the name itself was just me thinking about kind of our personalities or even just personas slash characters that we act like you know when we're on the internet because we're not necessarily this crazy weird and whatever in real life which I'll get on that later but um so that's kind of, you know, just where it all started was just a few of us playing Grand Theft Auto and made a crew on there. Then, you know, I just got, I realized that, you know, I had the expenses to start up a YouTube channel and that's just kind of how it blossomed. Let's see. Fourth question here is from Fubar Gaming. What do you look for in a game? Do you have a favorite storyline from a game? Well, I feel those are two different uh, questions, so I'll answer them separately. What to look for in a game, more than anything, is just honestly the gameplay. How it feels, how it handles, what kind of stuff you can do. Um, you know, to me, that's going to be more important than any storyline. Because if I want something with a solid storyline, you know, that's what movies are for. Um, do I have a favorite storyline from a game? Yes. The majority of the Metal Gear Solid series. 
I'm not going to include Metal Gear Rising because it was a total crap turd in my opinion, and Metal Gear Solid 5 also had its disappointments. Um, but otherwise, I would say if you've played Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, the Metal Gear Solid 4, um, you have a really excellent storyline. And I do mean in that order because Snake Eater was technically the prequel to all of them. So, and and I feel like Metal Gear Solid 4 just wrapped everything up so perfectly at the end. I mean, there was no, in my opinion, there was no way they could have finished it off better. Um, now the next question, well, two questions actually, is from Purple Gaming. Uh, the first one is, what was your first game that started your love for gaming? Now that digs back to when I was just a small, small child, probably about three or four, before I even had my own console. Um, I would actually watch my older uncle Vance play games on his systems and all that. Um, primarily, he would, I would always watch him play either the Final Fantasy games or uh, the Castlevania games back then. So I guess, you know, that's just where it all started, was watching him and just being entertained by it. And then, you know, when I was about five, um, he and my other uncles got me a Super Nintendo. Which, you know, they passed on some of their games to me, such as, you know, Super Mario, Castlevania 4, and, you know, the original Mario Kart. And I don't care what anyone says about that game now, that game is still fun as fuck for me to go back and play every now and then. Especially with my little brother. Let's see. Now the next question by Purple Gaming here is, if you could choose one game you could live in for a day, what would it be and why? Honestly, I would say Brutal Legend, just because I'm a huge rock and metal fan and I loved the environment that they did for it. Um, again, I don't want to give too many spoilers to that game itself. It's definitely something I would recommend, especially because you can pick it up for like three or four bucks anywhere. It is, it's a true gem of its own. It, and the gameplay itself between, you know, you have your average kind of hack and slash slash um, action adventure kind of playing, but then it's like they have the, like these bigger battle scenes where it's like more tactic and fo focused how you move your troops along and just the kind of stuff you can get in there. Plus, I mean, they got cameo voices by Ozzy Osbourne. Lemmy Kilmeister of Motorhead, and Rob Halford of Judas Priest, you know, so for me that's just too much love, in the, and again, I just feel like they blended it all in together very, very well. Um, now the next question here is by Mouse Egg. Are you a fan of Nintendo games? If so, what's your favorite? Well, yeah, I grew up with Nintendo for the majority of my gaming life, you know, all the way up to the Wii, and that's kind of when I switched over and started focusing more on Sony. And, you know, I liked the original Xbox, but, you know, after that, I just I, I just feel like Microsoft kind of went, eh, we'll just throw you whatever and you'll enjoy it. I don't feel like, you know, this is just my perspective, but I don't feel like Microsoft really put as much passion or love into gaming as they had back then with the original. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, I've seen some of the stuff they put up for the Wii U and I would personally love to get one and play some of the stuff on there um my favorite Nintendo game of all time it's really hard to say um but probably the original Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo um growing up you know I've always been a huge Mortal Kombat fan as well but yeah, I think it's just mostly because of how Killer In Instinct has almost become um, extinct. Now, granted, I know Xbox rebooted it, and it's probably the first time they've ever successfully rebooted a Rare title, and it's done pretty well. I've seen some of the gameplay of it. I've actually played it on um, a, one of my friends' Xbox One. It is pretty fun, but it just doesn't feel the same as the original or even Killer Instinct Gold on the N64. It just doesn't have the same luster that it used to. But again, that's just my opinion, my perspective. You know, 
I know there's a lot of people out there that enjoy it, and I'm glad that they do. Because, you know, at least that'll help keep the title alive. Now, the next question here is from Suki. Oh, this is a little complex, but here we go. Have you ever fallen in love with a game or character from a game that made you play the game many times without getting bored of it? Yes. Um, I wouldn't say like a specific game, but there are two um, titles. Um, I would say, again, the Metal Gear Solid games that I had mentioned earlier, as well as a lot of the Mortal Kombat games. Um, specifically, um, with Metal Gear Solid, because of Snake, just because of just because of his complexity and the way it's it's very hard to disagree with him and not relate to him for his own idealisms and the way that he goes about things. Um, with Mortal Kombat, it was for me always about Scorpion because there was always so much mystery behind him. He was neutral. He wasn't good. He wasn't evil. He was anti-hero and. Even after you learned his backstory, there was just so much more mystery surrounding him that just made you coming, or made me go back more to it to see what else is there about him. You know, will he finally get his revenge? Will he finally be at peace? Because for him, it only gets more and more complicated. So, those would be two my two examples. Um, let's see. Next one here is from Holly is Afraid, asking. Would you rather walk on Legos or broken glass? Well, between the two, I've always found that Legos are a lot easier to kind of sweep out of your way. So, I'd go with broken glass just because of the extra challenge. Now, we have questions from people who wish to remain anonymous because, I don't know, they just don't want to get ridiculed on the internet, I guess. But, here we go. First one is, what do you think it takes to be a good content creator? Um, that's up to perspective, honestly. I mean, in my own opinion, I'm going to be more based off of personality than whatever the hell is going on in your video. You could be sitting there playing E.T. on the NES, which is the shittiest game of all time. As long as you're funny, you're entertaining, if you have the personality or character, yeah, I'm going to be down for it. Uh, you know, that's just my opinion, my perspective, again. You don't even have to be great at editing. I feel like, especially at this day and age with how the internet and YouTube and social media in general has become on the rise, even more so than television or movies, and you look at the reasons for it, the content creators behind it, such as PewDiePie, Game Grumps, uh, let's see, Vanoss, H2O Delirious, and so many more. Nine times out of ten, people aren't watching them just because of what they're playing. They're watching them because of their characters, who they are. It's how they can make you laugh and just you relate to them. Honestly, I think that's what it takes is just not being afraid to put yourself out there. Especially because, you know, when you're out in the real world, it's all corporate America all over the place. You gotta have a filter, you gotta think before you speak can't just throw any old opinion out there because you get bashed for it or you get to lose your job god forbid um so i say you know utilize the internet to be whatever the hell you want express yourself however you choose to because even though i might have my opinion on it i mean there's still other people out there that or even just you know, oh, uh, okay i'm mashing up my words at this point i'm just gonna wrap that one up where it is so, next question is, do you have any haters? If so, how do you handle them? Well, I guess I can continue this on from what I was about to get into is, uh, yeah, of course. With the kind of shit that I say or joke around about, I'm bound to get critically panned at some point or another. The way I deal with it is, you know, I just accept it because not everyone's going to share you know, the same kind of character that I'm putting out there. They're not going to share the same, you know, sense of humor or what, however you want to look at it. You know, and that's just, that's another thing to take in consideration if you're a content creator or are thinking about it. You know, the one thing you have to think about is 
what kind of um got it I had the word for it and it just slipped my mind I'm sorry but you oh, okay here it is you got to think about your your demographic what are you aiming for what kind of personality are you trying to attract um, for me it's I'm I'm out there for the crazy people I'm out there for the socially retarded or the rejected or the misfits however you want to look at it that's what I aim for because I want to help give them a place where they feel like you know they belong and that they're not completely alone I mean there is so many channels out there that are a lot more just overall friendly and you know that's cool that's fine I don't have anything against them and I respect them for it but for me it's you know I just want to do something different and that's why I do what I do alright now the last question here guys here we go do you ever think things you say slash joke around about or over the line yeah, I do, and I fully acknowledge it. I even have my own personal struggles with a lot of shit that I say in my videos. Because, you know, in real life, you know, I'm, I'm a hardworking man, I'm a father of a two-year-old daughter, and I'm a Christian. But I also feel like, you know, if I'm not able to break my own boundaries to help unite others, you know, and I know that sounds completely arrogant, but here's, here's my perspective on this, is what's the point of taking life too seriously if we're not going to make it out alive? You know, and again, out in the real world, I'm not who I am in these videos. You know, this is where I get to express myself. This is where I get to just whatever. Say whatever. Be whatever. It's... You can be a superhero. You can be a villain. You can be an anti-hero. It doesn't matter. You know, it's... And again, and that's just the appeal that I'm going for. That's the appeal, or the appeal, that I feel that I'm just better at. I can, I could sit there and, you know, be more family friendly, more kid friendly, you know, all that. But it just doesn't interest me. It, it's a lot more fun to be able to just be that crazy hyena. It's more fun to be able to laugh at things that I normally wouldn't. And I feel like if most people kind of had that same, just tried it. Just tried it on each other without taking each other seriously. If we were to shatter the circles, these boundaries that we all have, instead of constantly trying to be politically correct, I think that we would get along a lot better if we were able to laugh at each other nine times out of ten, instead of wanting to start a war over a flavor of bubblegum. So, those are all the questions, guys. We're done with that. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> cool. Um, so, either way, I hope you enjoyed the Q&A. Thank you all for the questions and giving me a chance to kind of, you know, let you guys get to know me a little bit more on, a, I guess, a personal level. Um, it's been fun. I'll see you guys later.